this was with you the whole time? Yes. 86-year-old Frank Pryor holds the Bible he carried as a 17-year-old Marine into one of the bloodiest battles in the history of the Corps. Just amazing that I could survive. And uh, I was very grateful to God to have been able to survive that battle. In February 1945, the U.S. military targeted the strategic airfields on the Japanese island of Iwo Jima. Its longest point measures just three and a half miles. The widest, only a mile and a half. It just seemed like it was going to be a piece of cake to take that island, but it was no piece of cake. 22,000 Japanese soldiers lay in wait. They were not on Iwo Jima, they were in Iwo Jima. A network of underground tunnels stretching for miles camouflaged the enemy force, all motivated by a resolute general. He said, kill 10 Marines before you die. <laughs> and uh, they were all there to give their lives to the, um, for their country to save Japan. Just coming ashore almost killed this artilleryman. Mortars were falling around when, uh, uh, when we were out on the ship. We could even hear bullets hitting the ship. And when Pryor's landing craft hit the black sand beach, it flipped over in heavy surf. When I when it turned over and spilled us out, um, then I walked, I was up the water to about up here, and I was struggling to get up there. Helped to shore by a close friend, the Marine next recalls the joke he heard in the middle of combat from a sergeant nearby. And he said, you guys need to reserve yourself a seat in the church because you survived this landing. <laughs> but Pryor says that close call on the water was a fitting introduction to an island that itself became a sea of carnage. And they were waiting for us. And they waited until the, the island was just full of Marines before they even fired on us. It was just a killing field. It was... <laughs> it was really sad. We learned later. We couldn't tell that was happening when it was going on, but I learned about it later and it was really bad. The casualties were staggering. In this comparison with the recent war in Iraq, you can see that battle lasted more than 3,000 days. The fight for Iwo lasted 36 days. More than 4,400 U.S. troops died in the nine-year war in Iraq. Close to 7,000 troops died in little more than a month during the assault on that one tiny island in World War II. The daily losses underline what was a bloodbath in the Pacific. And it was the fourth day of the battle that the flag went up, and um, it was really encouraging. From his post on a 75-millimeter pack howitzer lobbing shells on the enemy, Frank Pryor witnessed one of the most celebrated moments of the entire war, the flag raising on Mount Suribachi. And I heard people saying, hey, look at the flag. And um, I looked up there, and there was that flag uh, flying on the mountain. Students of history know there were two flag raisings atop that volcano. I saw the first one, and um, it, it wasn't up there very long. And the second, with a larger flag, produced this famous picture, but Pryor says it was the first that held the deepest meaning. It was a great morale booster. Everyone was so grateful to see that flag and to know that we are winning. In all, Pryor spent 23 days fighting on this postage stamp of an island in the Pacific. Volcanic sand. He keeps a jar full of sand taken from the beach at Iwo and hopes future generations take time to study the sacrifice on that distant shore. And I hope someday that um, the schools will do a better job of uh, educating the students, the young kids, about what really went on on this great battle of Iwo Jima.